Last month, I challenged my subscribers to race a craft of their choice down one of two River Canyon courses I had laid out on the planet Kerbin. This is the second River Canyon challenge I've put together. The first challenge had only one course available on the shorter, twistier Monte Carlo course. This time I also offered the longer River Kyle course, which is over 800 kilometers long. Challengers were welcome to use whichever one they thought was most relevant. On both of these courses, the challenge is to fly between the two endpoints of the river while staying under the course ceiling of 400 meters. This was not necessarily a race. I encouraged the challengers to bring me a wide range of submissions, and they certainly did. In the prompt for the challenge, I said that I'd be looking for things like course time, added degree of difficulty, low altitude, creativity, and aesthetics, but I tried to judge this very subjectively and leave it as wide open as possible. The response to this was huge. I got well over 100 submissions, many of them good enough that I really wanted to put them in this video. The quality of the submissions I got far exceeded my expectations. I'm proud of the community for what it was able to put together here and excited to be able to show you just a couple of them. I've put together a top 10 list of some of the best representatives of what I received. We're going to start at 10 and count down to the grand winner. Before I do the top 10, I want to thank Strats and Blitz for doing his own take on this challenge, which I'm sure helped the visibility of this. I'm not going to consider that in the top 10. I'm DQing him for being Strats and Blitz. To start off with at number 10 is one of the magnificent boat submissions I received. I could have made a top 10 list of just the boats, but I forced myself to pick just one. My favorite of these was Three Cubes Axolotl, a high-speed propeller-driven catamaran. I liked a lot of things about this, including the ducted fan aesthetic, the interesting solution to the obstacles in the river, as well as the fact that it was fairly quick for a boat. However, fairly quick for a boat still means that this took 2 hours, 12 minutes, and 47 seconds to complete the course. The combination of all those reasons is what put 3 Cubes Axolotl over the top and made it my favorite of the extreme yachting submissions. Number 9 is Kerbal Engineering Systems P5 Skyfall Mark 7. There was a lot of low-speed ultralight submissions to this challenge, but only one of them started with this bizarre and awesome rocket-powered catapult. The simultaneous disaster and magnificence of this start almost single-handedly got it this place on the list. However, it also impressed me with the creative aesthetic of the electric paramotor and the dedication of the 3-hour and 37-minute run. Number 8 on this list goes to Dreadful Engineering's piston-powered airplane. And when I say piston engine, he really did make a piston in stock Kerbal Space Program. I'm incredibly impressed that he got this to work, much less get it to, to work reliably and practically enough that it was able to complete this two hour and 43 minute run. I also really love the way this looks. While it looks bizarre and fantastical, it also reminds me of some real-life engineering. The engine's exposed mechanicals looks like something you might see on a boat, and the design of the plane looks like the early years of airplane design. Now all we need is for him to strap a bunch of these together and have a glorious V-12 engine flying down the River Canyon. At number 7 is Rocket Engineer's G for George a detailed and faithful replica of an Avro Lancaster. Replicas were another category with a extremely deep field of quality submissions. I could have made a, another top 10 of just the replicas alone. This is also a tribute to a particular mission that this aircraft performed. And this replica includes a rather unique spinning bomb design that was used for a dam busting mission. On top of all that, the flight itself is very impressive, done at extremely low altitude and precision. If you're interested in the history of aircraft, definitely check out the original video that Rocket Engineer put up. He displays a really impressive level of knowledge and passion for this. At number six is Two Pros Minimal Plane. 
We're all about minimization on this challenge, and there's a lot of ways that you can minimize a mission. You could try to minimize the cost of it, you can minimize the launch mass of it, or you can minimize the part count. This plane only has three parts. It has the cockpit, the wing, and the Goliath engine. The Goliath engine is obviously essential to this, being as it offers the specific impulse necessary to do this run on a single stage. And it also has the intake combined in the same part as the engine. Without it, you need to go to four parts to also have that intake. The single wing forces the bizarre asymmetrical design of this. There actually have been asymmetric plane designs throughout history. Definitely nothing like this. I think we can categorize this as something that definitely only works in Kerbal Space Program. An incredible idea to do this challenge with, and amazing execution as well. It also isn't too slow. It finishes the River Kyle in under an hour at exactly 58 minutes. Let's remember that the only control available to 2 Pro here to turn and control the craft is from the reaction control in the crew module, making this a tough piloting challenge as well. Number five is Derpal Perp's Baba Buoyinator. If you thought anything you've seen so far is strange or unusual, it's about to get a lot weirder. Questioning the very essence of what it means to actually complete this course, Derpal Perp has managed to go from the start line to the finish line in a single physics delta. It's going to be very difficult to actually determine what that means just from watching the video, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of explaining here. Similarly to how a computer monitor has a certain number of frames per second rather than a continuously changing image, Kerbal Space Program has segments of time over which it does all its physics calculations. By attaching a very large set of decouplers to a one kilogram strut, Derpal Perp is able to accelerate it instantly to over four million meters per second. I'm not absolutely certain we can trust that displayed speed, but my math shows that it looks about right. The speed is so great that in one interval of the game's physics, it moves from the start line to the finish line, where it is instantly annihilated. Now, does this actually count in completing the course in what would round to zero seconds and would of course be the fastest time? I don't think it really matters. I'm just happy that Derpal Perp showed us that this was possible. Number four and number three are going to be done together here because they are very similar submissions that were both done at incredibly high speeds. This pairing is going to be a head-to-head -head race down the River Kyle between Laszlo S's LazJet 3, a fairing occluded rapier-powered plane, and Colin H's Supercruise, another occluded rapier-powered plane. The displayed start times are of course different. I've done my best to sync these up throughout the run. Before we start, a quick note. Laszlo does have a couple minor course violations in this video. He did send me a different video where he had no course violations and actually completed the low altitude course. I'm using this video because the flight is more similar and the times are going to be extremely similar. The Super Cruise enters the River Kyle course significantly faster, which means that by the time they reach the apex of the first corner, it has a lead of around three seconds. However, Laszlo is extremely quick through this first corner, and on the run out of this corner, they're about dead even. At this point, Laszlo begins to slowly pull ahead. Laszlo then slowly accumulates this lead, reaching an advantage of about six to eight seconds. At this point, Colin seems to even out the splits, and the gap between them stays about even for another couple minutes until they reach wrong way fork, at which point Laszlo is six seconds ahead. Through the tricky S corner following wrong way fork, Colin is significantly faster, gaining back about three seconds, and he's three seconds back at the exit of that corner. However, at this point, we need to look at one of the interesting differences between the designs they're using here. Laszlo has more thrust than he needs, by which I mean that if he has the throttle on 100% for this full run, he's gonna run out of fuel before he reaches the finishing line. Because of this, he's throttling back some of the time, but on things like corner exits, he can put the throttle all the way down. So immediately after the exit of that corner, he actually gained the three seconds that he had lost back. Using this technique, he accumulates more of a lead 
and is eventually about 12 to 13 seconds ahead. However, at this point, he seemed to calculate that he might have been using a little bit too much feel, because I noticed that he begins to back off a little bit more on the throttle during the straight sections. So with about three minutes of racing left, Colin begins to make a comeback. With about two minutes to go, he's only six seconds down. And with about one minute to go, he's reached a gap of only four seconds. On the entry to the last S corner, there's a gap of about six seconds. The last jet is having some stability issues here, which cost it a couple seconds, but it hits the finish line first, followed about four seconds later by the Super Cruise. Let me cap off this race by saying that these guys make this look easy, but flying at these speeds down this canyon is incredibly difficult, so thank you so much for giving us this to spectate. So that race gave us number four and number three out of our top 10. So we've only got two left. Before showing the top two, I'm gonna put up some brief clips from some of the excellent submissions I got that did not make it into the top 10. Choosing the grand winner between number one and number two was incredibly difficult. I kept going back and forth. I'd watch one and be convinced that this had to be the grand winner. Then I'd go and watch the other one and change my mind and be convinced that that one had to be the grand winner. They are diametrically opposed in what they were going for. Really, the only similarity was how impressive they were. As a result, I've decided to make it a tie. We're going to have two grand winners here. The first of the grand winners we're going to look at is Knight of St. John's Aquanaut Mark 10. This submission took the low altitude concept and cranked the knob to 11. The submarine is propelled by two contra-rotating propellers and is good for a speed of about 50 meters per second. This is obviously wildly fast by the standards of any real submarine, but this course is about 800 kilometers long, so this run is going to take him quite a while. He also has to deal with some of the obstacles in a river. How a river flows when it has parts in it where there's no actual river is a mystery for the planet Kerbin, but we still have to get over them. But of course, what submarine doesn't come without doors that can open on the bottom with jet engines to lift you up out of the water and over any obstacle. It also comes with its own set of refueling apparatus, mm -hmm along with quite a large set of drills to do it as quickly as possible. After all this is completed, the total course time for the River Kyle here is, take a deep breath, two days, three hours, eight minutes, 41 seconds. Now I should note, Kerbin days are only six hours long. So using a 24 hour day, we'd really be looking at a little over 15 hours, but that is still a little over 15 hours. So obviously I commend Knight of St. John for the incredible dedication to finish this run. But that's not even the most impressive thing about this. First off, look at the build. Getting all of these complicated systems to work, and work reliably obviously, in a package that still looks good is really impressive. But the most impressive thing about this submission is the incredible cinematic edit he put together. It really needs to be watched in its entirety and I can't recommend enough that you go over to the link in the description of this video and watch that on his channel. Go get some popcorn and watch the full 15 minutes. You won't be disappointed. So that was one of our grand winners. Let's look at the other one, which is going to be Wide Yoda with the Fast Boy 10. This could not be more different than Knight of St. John's submission. The submarine was the slowest of the submissions I got, and this is the fastest. This submission is notable for its simplicity. He's used all the fairing occlusion tricks that we have to reduce the air, air drag on a craft, but really this is just a simple rapier-powered jet flied very quickly down the canyon. And it goes really quick. At the speed he's going at, even small increases to your speed dramatically change how the corners hit you and the kind of piloting that you need to do to get through them. In addition to putting together the fastest run down the River Kyle course, he's done it under the low altitude course ceiling with extremely smooth flying 
dangerously close to the canyon walls throughout the whole run. I hope this looks difficult, but I guarantee you it is more difficult than it looks, no matter how difficult that it looks. In the original prompt for this challenge, I had some links, including some to some craft files for you guys to use. I recommend you guys try out the fast jet from that and just try flying it down the canyon because it will give you an idea of the magnitude of the piloting skill that Wide Yoda shows here. The control technique is interesting here too. He's using trim commands from a keyboard rather than a joystick, which definitely surprised me, but I can't argue with the results that he's shown. He's put together a near-perfect run with an extremely well-optimized craft. The end result is a course time of 9 minutes and 41 seconds. Using an estimated course length of 826 kilometers, this gives him an average speed of 1,422 meters per second. Although I actually suspect it's slightly higher, because when you do go at this speed, you're taking the corners a little bit wider on the exit and entry, which I suspect increases the distance that you actually traveled. And that brings the second Monte Carlo curbling challenge to a close. Based on the huge response to this, I'm definitely going to put something like this together again. Hopefully get some help with it next time. The huge amount of submissions made this much more of a task on my end than I anticipated. Thank you very much to everyone who participated for allowing this to happen. And thank you everyone for watching this as well. Don't forget to check out the links to the original submitted videos in the description.